I want you to sit in his presence for a moment. You know, I want you to know that we are coming through seasons of divination. There's divination all the time. We are, we've come out of Halloween. It's still some of the pagan feasts going on and then we're going into Diwali. So it's a lot of divination. And the time has come where we need to not listen to those Christians who say that the devil can't affect us. We know that we have authority over the enemy. Well, we know this. But like everything else, sometimes we may go to sleep angry and give the enemy a foothold according to the word of God. So we cannot deny, according to the word of God, that there might be openings that will give the enemy an opportunity to swipe at us. And also, too, the word says we do not fight against, we do not war against flesh and blood, but we war against wickedness in high places. So if it wasn't important to tell us that we war against wickedness in high places, I mean, I would imagine that there's no need to tell us that because the attitude could be, well, the war is over. So why tell us that the battle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against principalities and powers and wickedness in high places because it's a war. Our spirit man is possessed by the Holy Spirit. No doubt about that. Satan can't abide in there. However, our mind and our emotions have been exposed to defilement. And so we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. And when we speak of mind, we speak of soul, mind, will and emotions all together soul so we are transformed by the renewing of our mind when our mind our mind what we believe affects what we feel so it's understood that we involve emotions here so for those who want people to feel that satan cannot affect you then there's no need to build spiritual muscles just be, just exist, just worship God and nothing else. Don't enter into any kind of repentance. Or any. Why do we repent? Because sin defiles us. Why is it something that should bother us? Because one, we're in disobedience to the true and living God. And secondly, it gives Satan an opening to affect us. So don't listen to those who say, the enemy can't affect us. Say, we know we've been given authority over the enemy and all power over all the power of the enemy. We know this. But that does not take away from the fact that we have to understand that Satan never stops sending stuff against us. And there are those who are Christians and are being delivered from being deeply involved in occultism and there are those who are Christians who there are those who hate them and tend to want to send arrows and send witchcraft against them and it doesn't mean that you're going to be taken over but you sometimes go through seasons of feeling as if things are affecting you and while it could be your flesh and we never ever stopped saying that it could be the flesh. Sometimes it's because the enemy or, or those who are operating through the power of Satan have decided that you are next on their hit list and they want to affect you. And you need to know that the enemy does not have the power to affect you. But then how often do we all walk in holiness? How often do we all walk in a way where there are no open doors. So sometimes the enemy is going to succeed and, and this is where we must understand there can be witchcraft attacks. Okay, so please don't um, 
let those who just make a blunt statement, you know, don't worry about those things. They don't sit with people day in and day out. They don't sit every day and see what's going on. And the fact is, we have authority over the enemy. But it's a war. And in a war sometimes, the soldiers on the good side get hit. And sometimes we get wounded. And sometimes we get tired. And sometimes we just... Somebody needs to tell us that there's stuff that is an open door to the enemy. And these are the things that we have to know. We are truth-centered. We are not demon-focused. But we are not unaware of the schemes of Satan. So those who tell you that Satan can't affect you, they don't know what the scripture is saying. Okay? You don't become obsessed with Satan. You don't every minute talk about some spell. But you need to understand that part of what affects us is is our sin and is our sin in the generational line and it's also the enemy who comes up against us and um, we need to be aware of some of it all of it I'll go as far as I can today I'm just giving you a short part now and then another part a little later so I want you to know that what is seen is more than what we do not see. Okay? What we look around in the natural we see, but there's a lot that we don't see. And there are symptoms of witchcraft attacks in our everyday life. And we need to be aware so that we can get help if we notice some of these symptoms. You don't become obsessed but you don't become literally unaware. So for instance, one of the major areas of the attacks of witchcraft is the dream. We experience a lot of witchcraft attacks in dreams. Why? When men slept, the enemy came and sowed tears, sowed weeds. When we are asleep, our God is down. When we are asleep, if our spirit man has not been fed and become strong, our spirit man will not fight in our sleep. When we get stronger in your sleep, your spirit man is responding. You know, and I told someone recently, you know, they said that there was a dream where there was a lot of divination and a lot of, you know, they were doing blood sacrifices and it was the actual night of Halloween that they had this dream in technicolor. And one of the things was that um, what they were noticing in the dream is that they were seeing the blood sacrifices occurring, but it was more like there were Christians doing stuff with Halloween, but they weren't seeing what Halloween was really about. This was a dream. And what happened was they in the dream, they came across someone who was representing like a, being a Christian. But they were using stuff. They were mixing stuff. Because the whole sense of the dream was that at the end of the dream, it was that there are those who are faithful to God. And there are those who, those Christians who are mixing stuff and judgment will come. And the sad thing is many will think that it was okay to mix and dabble. And in the dream, there was one thing that happened that I told the person, I said, you answered back in the dream. Every time the enemy tried to tempt you with something, but there was this one person who asked for their dress. And at first they said no because they were trying to tell the person, you know, no, this is my dress. And I'm still going to talk with this person, but they, in the end, it wasn't because they felt intimidated. It's almost like they felt like, you know what? You're, you're nagging so much, I'll give it to you. And I said to them, you never, ever give over your garments in the dream. Because they use your garments. 
in the dream and I and I and I immediately told them what they had to do they weren't afraid sometimes we make mistakes but your spirit man will answer back because the spirit man was the one that was answering back and and fighting back and sometimes your spirit man um, will not always respond the way your spirit man needs to because for lack of knowledge we perish and so I am saying to you all, in dreams, they come to feed you. They come to take your stuff. And they reinforce in the dream. They come in the dream when you're, you're not as alert as you normally would be. But it's as real as because God speaks to you in dreams. If God could use dreams to speak to you, if God could say, dreams are important for me to speak to you, then we know that Satan will use dreams too. If God could use dreams to minister to you, then Satan will use dreams to do what he wants to do to you. So those who smirk and look at this nonsense, well, I know that you read the scripture. God has spoken in visions and dreams to people. So I want you to know that many people take this realm of spiritual warfare for granted. And they, 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 they make derogatory remarks about it. These, these fanatics that talk about Satan comes in dreams and can affect Christians. Well, yes. And if you go into the Bible, you will find where dreams were huge in terms of communication with God's people. So we need to understand that we know that no witchcraft power can dominate anyone, okay, that is not, you know, living in sin. So the power of witchcraft that may come in the dream, the reason why it might affect you, and this is where I say we are not overnight perfectly healed and set free of everything so there will be some doors open and that's where the enemy will affect so those who say that satan cannot affect a christian well then we you're saying that we're all like there's no photos there's no openings that's not the case we're all at different stages so i want us to know that there are three categories of people obviously there are those who are possessed by Satan, okay, and then the alternative is possessed by the Holy Spirit. So if you are possessed by the Holy Spirit, which means the Holy Spirit lives in you, it is possible in your mind you can be oppressed, you can be affected by demons, you cannot be possessed by demons, but you can be, I use the word demonized because it's another word for oppression affecting areas in your mind and emotions that have not yet been renewed by the word of God because we have watched certain shows we have spoken certain ways we have we have used our emotions in wrong ways we are led by our emotions we have not submitted our emotions to the Lord if you're not submitted to the Lord it's still submitted to Satan and then there are those who are totally ignorant of witchcraft attacks so attacks in the dreams can include witchcraft initiation, curses, spells, arrows, and fiery darts. And sometimes, and I see this quite often, and um, I can't say that my experience is a reason for people to believe. So people are free to believe what they want. I am just saying on God's pulpit, right before his people that that sometimes i sit with christians who something attacks them in the dream and they wake up with the very mark of where they were attacked and you cannot tell people this is not true you cannot say it's not true but experience does not prove the bible so people are free to disbelieve it but my position is that i don't have to prove anything to anyone I just have to obey God. 
And those who need help because there are things happening to them that no one wants to believe are free to come for help. And I don't enter into a debate with people as to whether these people are sincere. I believe that God sends people for help. And I'm telling you, there are times when the enemy takes a swipe at a Christian and they wake up with the same mark of where they were affected in the dream, in the natural. They will see the marks, whether it's their back, their hands, their leg, whatever it might be. So I just want us to know that at the end of the day, if you dream something affecting you negatively in, in the dream, something shooting you, something killing you, then you know, okay, I have all power of all the power of the enemy. That is not going to happen in the natural. I'm going to reject it in Jesus' mighty name. I'm sending that bullet back from where it came. I'm rejecting it. And I begin to pray that way. Because the enemy will try to do something to you in the natural. It starts in the spiritual realm. So just as the Lord in the spiritual realm will fill you with his Holy Spirit and you will experience an outpouring, the manifestation of that in the natural is the fruit. And you begin to be a certain way that you say like, what we used to bother, you're not bothering you anymore. So you will find that it starts in the spiritual realm and witchcraft will attack First in the spiritual, and then the manifestation is in the natural. But you are spirit beings in a human body. So when you remember the dream, and that's why many times the enemy will try to stop you from remembering your dreams. And you have to start to pray and get some help if you don't know how to pray. God, please begin to clear out whatever is blocking my spiritual antenna. Because God speaks to you in dreams. And you're supposed to remember the dreams. And even if it's the enemy. The fact is you're supposed. God will allow the enemy. Because remember God has the last say. So you need to be able to remember. So you got to bring that before God. I've always found that. When I encourage people. To pray. To anything that's in their foundation. To be rooted out they begin to remember their dreams again. Okay, because sometimes there are things in the foundation, maybe in the bloodline, assignments, Freemasonry, where you're not supposed to be serving God, but you're serving the true and living God. However, the enemy wants you to go in the wrong direction. So guess what? He will use the dreams to come to affect you. And then when you don't remember the dreams, you can't take a position against the dream. Do you understand? Or maybe God speaks to you in the dream and you want to remember what God has said. So don't sit on, I'm not remembering and it's nice and quiet and you need to, if, if you can't, if you pray for yourself and nothing is happening, then be in your discipling appointment. Say, I need to deal with the fact that I'm not remembering my dreams. So I want you to know that There are those who, and I, and I challenge anyone who wants to say, this can't happen to a Christian. Okay? Come from wherever you are and offer to devote six months of your life and sit with me with people for six months, day in and day out. Because the thing is, as the word has said in Isaiah 61, 1 to um, 3, set the captives free. And a whole list of things that he has said where he will, he sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. So therefore, we are speaking of Christians who need help in these areas because only Jesus can heal. So while, yes, Jesus could heal someone who's not saved, when it comes to setting the captive free and healing the brokenhearted, it's only through 
Christ that that can happen. So we're talking here Christians, okay? So I want us to understand that uh, when that woman of Abraham who descended from Abraham had this bleeding infirmity, touched the hem of his garment, she was a child of Abraham and she was suffering an infirmity and she touched the hem of Jesus' garment. So, so please, please, the theology that does not allow for Christians to get help for things that bother in them is a theology that stymies the church from having spots and wrinkles removed. Do you understand? It's indirectly quenching the work of the Holy Spirit. And I think that there are people that just, they mean well, but it's just not. I, I, I don't have the heart to tell a person who tells me that, um, you know, a relative dreamt that they were killed and then they just, they, weeks later they died. And these things, I hear these things and, and you know, and they now are the Christian and they are starting to have those dreams. I can't tell them, well, you're not a Christian and that's why you're having those dreams. I can't sit back and just say, well, ignore it. I say, well, hear what? You begin to come against untimely death. And whatever generational spirit of death coming down there, you are not going to be affected by because you have all power over all the power of the enemy. I can't sit back and say, well, they're not a Christian and that's why it's just happening because what happens is that sometimes there are those who say, well, well, it can't affect a Christian like that. Well, I'm here to say then all the spots and wrinkles should be gone and the church should be pure. So, and the church should be also so powerful that it's affecting the darkness around we're not there yet, but we're getting there. So I, w I want us to know that there are those negative dreams you need to deal with. And there's no need for fear, but you need to cancel them, reject them. And in fact, at the same time, you need to ask the Lord if there's any doors in your life, unforgiveness, whatever it might be, that's there. Because they have a way to get in through the footholds, like the scripture talks about. So you could go reject all you want. But if you are, your life is sinful, they are going to affect you through that open door of sin. So I want us to know that we've got to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Philippians 2.12 And... That's what that means. Because things will come against us and it's not the Holy Spirit, it's the enemy. And we've got to work out our salvation, not work for. So, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. Matthew eleven twelve. We cannot sit back and allow violent enemies to come and violently take what God has blessed us and, and, and said is our inheritance, right? But I need you to know there are different ways of violently taking things by force. There's no one particular way. I just want to let you know that, okay? So at the end of the day, witches have wicked intelligence networks to destroy their victims Wherever they are, they seek to destroy. There are lukewarm Christians that are sitting ducks for witches and warlocks to affect and attack. See, our problem is we make a general statement. A witch or warlock cannot take you down if you're a Christian. That assumes you're holy as God is holy. And while that should be so, there may be some things we haven't dealt with. So maybe they can't take you down, but they could cause heavy depression. They could cause a feeling of despondency. They could cause you to feel like you can't focus. You're paralyzed. You can't function. And I myself have experienced 
whenever there's divination in the atmosphere, I, I, can, I can discern it and I literally will feel the dizziness and I will know that something is going on and, and maybe before I knew what it was, it would be hard to focus. But once I know, this is no old age thing. You understand? This not not touching me at all in Jesus' name. Deal with this. It has to back off. It has to go. But they send stuff. How can you say that we can't be affected? Say we can't, we don't have to be overpowered. Say that we don't have to be destroyed. Say that we don't have to be flattened. But unfortunately, holiness is not preached in every church. Repentance is not preached in every church. So therefore, there are those who will be flattened and will be destroyed for lack of knowledge. Their wicked intelligent network is swift and fast. And we have to be vigilant because we don't often understand when we are actually under attack. Saints, for those who are listening to this message right now, I just want you to know that many messages are preached that talk about focusing on the truth. Do not take this message and say, this church is all need to talk about demons attacking. That's not so. There are many things we talk about, even in terms of where a lot of churches are not dealing with the soul wounds, the trauma, the deep pain, the deep hurts, those things that will keep us back. And that's where some of these spirits hide. But you could only talk about one thing at a time. You have to take everything all together. The unadulterated word of God. And because of the season we are in, I'm seeing a pattern with those who normally would struggle because they're not fully set free in their mind and emotions and their bodies. Because in deep witchcraft and occultism, if you've been initiated as a witch and you have become saved, some things are sometimes planted in your body and those things have to be removed. Everything doesn't leave all at the same time. So you'll find that certain things activate at this time, this season. And I've helped people to get ready. This might happen, but this is what you need to do if it starts to happen. So they don't overcome you. There's a lot of Christian mind programming that has gone on as a topic by itself. There's a lot of occultic mind programming. Everybody is not totally free of everything. We make an assumption that we are all perfectly set free. So we make these ridiculous statements that the devil can't affect you. You ought to be truth-centered, but at the end of the day, he can affect you if you, as the word says, have a foothold or you have a, 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 a stronghold in your life that has not been broken. And I want you to know that witches deny their victims the benefits, especially those who are living in sin or are, or are just defiled divine enjoyments. Like some people, incessant sorrow. That's a sign of witchcraft. Incessant sorrow. You cannot tell me that that person with incessant sorrow is not a Christian. This is what is get me real upset. You're saying they cannot be affected by demons. Then you're telling me then who we're dealing with is pagans. These are Christians who are in bondage to incessant sorrow. False grief. And sometimes there is wickedness from in their household, from in their family line. Anytime you start to see spirits of death in a family, people are dying one after the other. There is a spirit of death. There's an assignment. Some contract was made down the road in the bloodline and the enemy is coming to claim. You say, well, can't claim a Christian. Well, here's the thing. Who is a Christian? What's your definition? Because everybody's a Christian today. But there are those who are walking circumspect and there are those who are not. So if you are not, you could be affected. However, if you are in a church that warns you 
If you have any dreams about premature death, you have to begin to pray against that and begin to ask the Lord, where's the opening? And I'll tell you something, eh? Some of the openings is real respectable sins that gives the enemy an opening. You know, like unforgiveness, bitterness, false accusation. Sins, when I come to give you all some scripture about accusation and those things, you know what we will realize? We real better be careful before we decide about a situation with somebody, you know. Because the Bible, I looked at multiple scriptures. And it's never going to be a person tell you something, so that is what it is. As a Christian, there's a criteria before you are obligated to believe something. So I've given you an opening. I've given you an opening to the enemy where we go through life believing things about people that we have not rejected those thoughts because somebody told us, so we believe them. But that's not right now. That's another topic, hopefully today. I'm giving you an idea of bitterness. Okay, we vex, we vex. We're going through life, we vex. Deal with the vexiness. Deal with the upsetness. Bitter root judgment is a huge open door. I know we are not all perfect, but that's also, to me, a Christian programming phrase. We are not perfect. We know that. But you know what that does? Ding, ding, ding. Wind us up. We're not perfect. So let's just go on because we're not perfect. And, and we're programmed to respond a certain way because of that one line. It, 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 it puts us in a false sense of security. We're not perfect. We know we're not perfect. That's why we have a need of savior. But then we have the word that says, be holy as I'm holy, which means I have a responsibility to ask God to help me deal with the imperfections. And we have a responsibility to help others. Because if you think somebody is guilty of something, you need to speak the truth to them in love so that they can address it. Because you leave that person now with whatever you believe about them. If it's true, then you have just left them exposed to Satan, if it's true. And maybe perhaps it might not be true. So I'm trying to show you how God has made a way for us. But witchcraft observes, takes note of certain things. So that the enemy then finds a way to affect. Denial of enjoyment. As I said, sometimes you will have intensive marital problems. Your life is full of frustrating near successes. At the point of breakthrough, po, thing falling through. When you see a pattern like that, it's witchcraft. It's going to require seriously dealing with any bloodline divination because contracts would have been made and it will be over you that them must also pay the price of whatever the contract is and you are the christian what is the what is the quickest way for satan to discourage you where you're fighting up with life every day you seem to be just going wrong and wrong in a circle every time there's a close breakthrough the breakthrough breakdown and that's how it goes to be frustrated because because the enemy can't get you to go into sexual immorality. The enemy can't get you to start a cuss and carry on. We hope. Okay. We hope. But. He could get you frustrated in life. He could get you feeling dung all the time. So I want you to know. There can also be a demonic delay of miracles. That you're just not. Experiencing. What God has said he will do. And it's not that you're just sitting there like the prosperity gospel waiting for it to fall out of the sky. But every single time you're, you're, you're about to, even in a spiritual breakthrough, it's just not coming. And sometimes there's delayed and denied promotions in your career. Clear symptom of witchcraft attack. 
Once you have checked that you're not sleeping on the people's job, once you have checked that you're not stealing on the people's job, once you know you've gone far above, that's the next thing, eh? I don't know what is taught today. I know in my time, and I'm still alive, so this is my time too. In our jobs, the boss asks us to do A, do A plus B plus C. I don't know what's taught today. All I know is your car refuse a promotion so to somebody. And in fact, if you are being denied then over and over, you know they have envy and jealousy and people talking because here's what, they find you showing them up. But I'm trying to show you that at the end of the day, envy and jealousy comes against you in the form of witchcraft to stop you from moving forward. But our attitude, please don't blame witchcraft and is your attitude. I'm doing this much and no further. That does not, I, I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how that works. That, that, I've never, I've, I've, I've been a child, I've owned businesses, I'm now a pastor of 10 years, and I don't know how, how that works with just, just enough. In every aspect of life, you give and give and give, right? Even when you think you're being taken advantage of. Who could take advantage of you? Only if you believe that people could take advantage of you, you have choice. Nobody could take advantage. If you choose to go way beyond, you have chosen. Nobody could take advantage of you. It's like Jesus. He wasn't taken advantage of. He chose to carry the cross. He chose. Nobody didn't gang up on him. And as a result of that, he was crucified. He chose. You can choose. Nobody can use you. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, unexplainable high debts. Over and over. Okay, Job 24, 90, 11. The fatherless child is snatched from the breast. The infant of the poor is seized for a debt. Lacking clothes, they go about naked. They carry the sheaves but still go hungry. They crush olives among the terraces. They tread the wine presses yet suffer thirst. Many people are experiencing this. And even if they haven't reached the point of going about naked, the fact is they have high, high debt. And whatever they do, they're almost in bankruptcy all the time. If you are living according to God's word and putting God first, and this is happening, there's definitely witchcraft. Again, let God search your heart for how you are living. If you are living in obedience, blessings are supposed to come. So if bankruptcy is coming, there's definitely witchcraft, and you, know, you need to know how to deal with it. You say, well, if I'm living right, why can I be affected? Because... We don't understand the amount of sin that was in our life from all the way back. So there's always some kind of little opening. And also, too, there are assignments. He or she gets into holy. You know how to affect that one? Take away, let them be always in high debt. Just like Job. It's Satan that comes against, Satan went against Job. Okay? So I want us to know that, and Job was righteous, right? Job was right. So who it is say that witchcraft can affect us? This really makes people despondent, you know, because you're like, well, God is everything. Okay, and then I am going to use the weapons you've given me because I'm going to deal with, I'm not dealing with flesh and blood, I'm dealing with wickedness in high places if there wasn't wickedness in high places he wouldn't tell us that there's wickedness in high places so i want us to understand that there need, there's a need to pray fervently there's a need to say i go in through the night praying i want us to know 
that the witches snatch the fatherless child from the breast and seize your destinies for death. And you're constantly paying debts upon debt. Financial embarrassment. Lame breakthroughs and businesses dry up. That is witchcraft. If you have, and I would encourage you all, get some discipline. Now, before you decide, before you decide that you are perfectly fine and you have no open doors. Many times we need, we, we only see in part. And, and I've, I've, I'm so amazed at when we meet together and we talk and we share, God begins to reveal what you think he gives word of knowledge for? You think the word of knowledge is always for you to know about yourself? Sometimes you need somebody else to sit with you and you see an open door there in the spiritual realm. And you say, well, okay, you need to begin to deal with this. You need to begin to deal with that. And because this pattern can't continue. Okay? So I want you to know that what the word says, you've planted much but I've harvested little. You eat, but never have enough. You drink, but never have your fill. You put on clothes, but are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. Does that sound familiar? We have to deal with some divination, but also to those of you that have Freemasonry in your lineage, this is some of what is the fruit and other things too. Perhaps maybe there's been gambling in your lineage and you can't seem to have any money because the whole pattern of gambling, the fruit of it, that whole thing has to be broken over your life and the lives of your children. I want you to know that there are physical infirmities due to witchcraft activities. Okay? Just a couple nights ago, someone was really just bleeding. Just bleeding. And of course, I said, you know, you have to go to the doctor the next day. Um, but the next day hadn't come. So we still had time to pray. And I, and I, you know, God will give us the logos, which is the written word. And God will give us rhema, which is word of knowledge. The Holy Spirit will reveal. And I said, you know, I, 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 let's, I'm going to pray. This, I, I, I'm discerning there's divination, but you know, you can still go to the doctor the next day. But if something is, if something is, is pouring, and it wasn't pouring before, this is, this is weird. Okay, we have nothing to lose. And as I began to pray, and began to send a second voice note, the person started to get deliverance right where they were. Whatever it was, it stopped. And I really believe because of the confirmation from them when I said the words envy and jealousy, something in them they felt. So it's like they confirm it. Well, I don't know what to say. It was a person a Christian, of course they were. You're gonna tell me that God doesn't give us the 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 gifting to deal with things that come in from the enemy. So you say, Well, okay, that was healing. That was nothing to do with witchcraft. Well, well, healing from witchcraft. Healing from witchcraft infirmity. Healing from an infirmity that was sent because of witchcraft. Do you understand? You know, we kind of a little bit too, too ridiculous, eh? Fact is, fact is, it stopped. Okay, boom. And, and so we know, okay, something was sent and them, you know, them witches and they did will stop, eh? So you better learn now to be praying to cancel any next attack. That's happening. And go to the doctor too. Yeah. Go and relate to them what happened. There's nothing wrong with going to the doctor. So I want you to understand that you can have infirmity that comes from witchcraft and infirmity that comes because maybe you picked up something from somebody and you got sick. All right. Also, there are talents and virtues that some are not using at all. It's witchcraft that is keeping them back. If in the ancestral line there's been a lot of witchcraft, the enemy doesn't want you to use your talents. So you find yourself not using your giftings in church, not even wanting to step out and answer that call, waiting to become perfect when it's not going to happen. So 
Destinies are diverted and manipulated, and this results in constant failure, joblessness, disfavor, and just not using your gifts and talents. Just a couple more. Rejection is one of the symptoms of witchcraft manipulations in our life. It doesn't have to be, but I will tell you that if we accept rejection, we are literally entering into accepting word from the enemy. Okay, I spoke about that before. So it's a, it's a lethal weapon because a lot of people, a lot of Christians experience rejection. And the spirit of rejection attacks our identity, destroys our self-esteem, attacks our very purpose in life. And so we could feel rejected in our homes, in our family, church, community, workplace. And when we simply allow this thing or just say, well, I, I, I feel rejected all the time, which is use it to destroy your personal life where you find it's a misplaced identity, where you have no sense of self-worth, where you do not value yourself anymore. You feel like everybody has rejected you. And it's one of the symptoms of witchcraft activities against our lives. Now, it could also be deep hurt and trauma, but I'm letting you know that if Satan could convince you of a false identity so that you just feel flattened and worthless all the time. That is how witchcraft achieves its aim, which is to give you a different identity. All right? And God never wants us to feel rejected or abandoned. And he desires to help us to know who we really are and how much he loves us and accepts us and appreciates us. And we have our freedom in Christ Jesus. So you can walk around feeling really down, really rejected, just the bottom of the barrel. I'm not saying it's only divination, but I am telling you it's one of the major ways that the enemy takes us down. So for example, when you look at Elijah, okay, when he destroyed the prophets of Baal, what happened to him with, with Jezebel? What did Jezebel do? She, he went and sat under the juniper tree feeling so terribly he wanted to kill himself. Well, Jezebel operates with divination. After a big breakthrough, you feel like depressed, discouraged. Saints, I'm, I'm, I'm telling, listen. There is no one particular thing, so you don't go and say, well, you know, she say, well, rejection is witchcraft attack on me. No, it could be that you have been raised, being told all kinds of negative things. But the enemy will use that to discourage you even further. And you could get a major breakthrough ministering to people. And next minute, you feeling flattened like you can't function. And that's what happened to Elijah. And, and it happens to, to pastors and ministers when they don't understand what's going on. They, it, it could be something huge that could literally seek to flatten them. But usually, you choose irrespective of how you feel. Then you won't get flattened. You'll get help because you choose even if I'm feeling this way, I know what God did and I know God calls me, even if my emotions don't tell me. And, John, and, and you remember that um, David spoke to his soul and he said, soul, why are you downcast within me? Yes? So sometimes you have to literally speak to yourself. These are some of the ways you overcome the witchcraft attacks. Sometimes you need someone to help you. But you literally have to speak to yourself. You speak to that part of you that is, 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 is feeling like you don't want to go on. It's like a wet blanket over you. And there are times you do have to ask people to pray for you. And then sometimes you're hearing voices. Evil spirits will tell you bad things about yourself and have conversations with you. 
Don't even try to talk back to them. They will exhaust you. And for those who say a Christian can't hear voices, all I know is Jesus in the wilderness heard the devil speaking to him on many occasions. And he didn't have sin. So please ease up the Christians who get in discouraged because they're like, I, they will say I'm crazy, but I'm, I'm sometimes hearing these voices talking. Yeah, they do. And sometimes it's a demon and it needs to be cast out of your mind. And sometimes there's deep hurts about who you, how you see yourself and they are wanting to make sure you remember how dumb and stupid you are. So you don't just deal with them and cast them out. You get help for the soul wound that's there, that, 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 that you feel that way. You need healing. You need healing, right? Or healing from trauma. Feelings of despair, you feel you cannot live anymore, you want to take your life. This is witchcraft. In no other, this, no other, no other description. And there are Christians who get to that point. You say, well, it can't be a Christian. Well, you sit there in judgment of your brother or sister. Okay? I will sit with them and walk them through. How did we get here? Do you understand? Because the theology just puts more pressure on the person. You're a Christian, you can't feel so. If you're a Christian, you can't feel so. The devil can't be affecting you so. That's not true. Sometimes there's things that Christians go through. And at that moment in time, they're vulnerable. And they feel a strong urge that they don't want to live anymore. Sometimes there's barrenness and miscarriages over and over. And barrenness. And for those who, I'm not saying anybody is dabbling in witchcraft and that's why they're barren. But barrenness is not the work of the Holy Spirit. Now it could be a physical problem, in which case either God will heal us or he will not. And some will not have children. But sometimes it's a spiritual problem. And I will always remember a certain family member. They're all deceased now. Literally, she was a practicing witch. And she spoke words over her daughter-in-law, you'll never go make a child. And she never did have a child. She never did have a child. But the spirit of death that was introduced into the family came for payback. Eh? So I sat back and watched. I saw where while the witchcraft carried out whatever it wanted to carry out and the, and the, and the daughter-in-law never had a child, the witchcraft and divination threw out the descendants. You saw where they were picked off, premature death, young people, this and that. It comes for payback. Those who dabble, there's always payback in the family pays the price. So I want you to know that at the end of the day, from the time even someone gets pregnant, we pray them through, pray them through. Because we've started to see over the years, all kinds of miscarriages that don't make sense. Where they never used to have a problem. Where the ones who not married carrying the child to full term and the Christian struggling. So we have had to, from the moment of before conception, we pray with people before. And then there are those who are struggling. We continue to pray for them so that they will conceive. And once they do, it's continuous. This is, and I am sure there are other churches like it. This is not a church you could get pregnant and we'll be like, okay, we're we, we, we praying for you. You know how we like to tell people we're praying for them, but we're not really praying for them. We're talking about praying. We get, we're encouraging you to know how to pray every day for that child, that womb, right? It's an intentional approach that is used because we've seen so many miscarriages over the years. I'm not speaking about this church. I'm just saying that 
Satan loves the unborn child, meaning he hates the unborn child. He loves to interfere with the, with the seed of the Christian. And then there are lots of health problems that come. All kinds of cancers, etc., etc. I'm not here to say that because you're ill, you was in witchcraft. I'm here to tell you that witchcraft causes infirmity. If they want to take you down, most times they can't get you to sin, but they will cause you to get sick. You say, well, I'm a Christian and I have all power over all the power of the enemy. Well, you should never have a bad day then. You should never be sad one day. You should never struggle. In, in other words, there will be things because of open doors that all have not been shut that Satan can affect us. But you're not staying so. If you are in a praying church, if you are in a church that knows how to strategically pray, is either if it's physical, you can heal. If it's spiritual, it can expose. So I want us to understand that examples of these things that I'm about to say here are the results of covenants with and bonds to the devil. And this is why I always want people to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Not me wanting, Jesus wants you. But I will disciple you that way. But I will also encourage you, once you understand about, about relationship with Jesus Christ, I will encourage you, begin to break destructive covenants. And I'll give you a whole handout and say to you, begin to break destructive covenants. Because sometimes we don't know how to pray um, thoroughly in that direction and we might just say to okay a break destructive covenant a break destructive covenant a break destructive okay but there may be prayer points that we have already accessed that we ask you to engage your mind and your heart not say it like it's like some remote control person okay You're not chanting but you are praying those prayer points to break you are using the authority God has given you over the enemy and you are breaking those destructive covenants so when you see a lot of prostitution, okay, stealing, drunkenness, violence, wickedness, children behaving bad all the time, stubbornness, cheating, deceiving, lying, sickness, depression, frustration, madness. The word of God says, praise be to God who loves the world and gave his son Jesus Christ to mankind by whom we obtain salvation. Without the shed blood of Christ, such covenants are meant to be everlasting. However, as a person so bonded comes to Jesus Christ and faithfully and willingly rejects the devil and sinful life, the Lord breaks the bond with his power and sets the individual free. And that's why I have a problem when, you know, well-meaning people say Christians can't be affected like that. But you have to be saved first. Like a fish, you're caught and then you're cleaned out. So there are things that have to be dealt with after you become a Christian. So how you could tell the people and them that the devil can't affect you that way? You came pack up with stuff. Your spirit man is sealed. The rest of your mind and emotions and in some cases your body has had deposits of things that have been deposited in you. And God wants to purge you of these things. And so, I want you to know that even in terms of some of the covenants that come in because of things that we wear, certain types of rings, certain types of pendants, okay, certain objects, they are devices for the devil, for identifying and enslaving those who have been sold to him. Some people use it as guards, as a protection, and they wear these things. But what the enemy is really doing is stealing, killing, and destroying. And, that's, and, and so, once the individual stops using those items, the covenant breaks the covenant, the covenant is broken. So there are those who will have those things in their homes, they will wear those things, it draws witchcraft, it draws demonic spirits, and at the end of the day, what happens is your strength will be weakened and you will faint. 
But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Okay? So, I want us to remember that the symptoms of witchcraft attacks are terrible because they can cause many sicknesses and diseases and emptiness among others in people's lives and these dangerous demons turn dreams into a battlefield. That's what we started saying. In the dream, about battles occur. And they are specialists in stopping, frustrating, and destroying marriages and families. And we must not give up easily. Right? They have no mercy. So we must not give up. But the deception of witchcraft practices, because some believe it cannot affect them, they become slaves without even knowing it. And at the end of the day, we need to understand that God will help us to identify what is divination and witchcraft. As we continue to be truth-centered, God will expose what are lies. God will expose those things that are not from him. And you will see patterns in your life and you will say, this is not, this is, this, something is wrong. And I, and this has to break off. And God has made a way for us to know the truth. The truth will set us free. What are we free from? Tell me, what is setting us free from? Free from what? The devil. And divination and witchcraft is part of what the devil is about. But I need us to know that right now, we need to be aware of the fact that we are not at the mercy of the devil. We have all power of all the power of the enemy. But we will never be unaware of his schemes. And we will never sleep angry and give him a foothold. Or do something else and give him a foothold and an opening. He studies us. We must study the word. And we must understand there are blotches and there are wrinkles that must be removed. And Satan uses that until God has removed all those spots and wrinkles. And less and less does the enemy have a hold over us. But when we have come out of all kinds of bloodlines, all kinds of sin, sometimes while we know our spirit man is sealed, we need more renewing of our mind. We need our emotions to be submitted to the Lord. We need the soul wounds that exist in us to be healed. And so, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I pray for your servants, O oh God. I pray, Father, that you will, O oh God, simply reveal based on what they are hearing O oh god reveal the truth reveal those areas where you want to go down and purge those areas where father witchcraft is influencing us it's battling our minds and it's affecting us but god you've given us a way forward and so, Father, I pray in Jesus' mighty name that you will help us. You will help us because you call us to walk with power and authority. And even as the apostle spoke to that diviner that was speaking words, these are sons of the Most High, and yet this was not the Holy Spirit. So he commanded that spirit to come out of that slave girl. God, there are times when witchcraft will follow us, will target us, will speak to us, will harass us, and we must know how to answer with the word of God and deal with those devils that use people to come up against us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, help us today as we continue to worship Remind us, we're not just here, we're not just singing songs, but we are praying in song, 
think on these words and worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen.